In Graffiti Lives, Beyond the Tag in New York's Underground, Gregory Snyder explores the separate layer of city life involving the graffiti subculture. Here, I've made a video that has assembled a number of pictures I have taken in New Orleans around the Tulane University campus and other neighborhoods for my deviant behavior class. Graffiti artists, called writers, do not use their real name in their graffiti. Writers begin by practicing their tag and getting their name out there. The task of writing is to saturate the city with your name. As writers gain experience, they may change their name and style. The simplest, and most common form of graffiti is tagging, which is done relatively quickly. Throw-ups, or fill-ins, are bigger, take more time and space, but are also done quickly and only include two colors. The last category is pieces, short for masterpieces. These elaborate, large, colorful works require more time, planning, and sometimes more than one set of hands like the help from beginning writers in easy, time-consuming components. Contrary to popular belief, most graffiti is found in well-traveled, touristy, booming locations where the largest amount of people will see the writer's work. Though this may not always be the case with some forms of graffiti, like gang graffiti that may target particular neighborhoods or people. Graffiti can be written on all sorts of surfaces. Writers illustrate the concept of bricolage by using different everyday parts of our society in their work. They use our surrounding city as their studio and its architecture as their canvas. Trash cans became, become painting surfaces, as do wall and, walls and mailboxes, where writers can send their names off to passers-by in hopes that their name will stick and they will gain fame. Many beginning Graffiti artists learn from older, more experienced writers in an apprenticeship sort of relationship. As a novice writer, one learns the power of the informal rules and norms. Different graffiti groups provide camaraderie. Sometimes writers have beef with other writers, even if they have never met face to face. Others can observe this relationship because sometimes pre-existing graffiti is covered by other writers. Otherwise, writers tend to to acknowledge the achieved status of great writers and leave their work alone out of respect. Some may put their tag up next to more accomplished writers to demonstrate their confidence in their ability. Another way to display one's skill is by choosing a difficult location to do their graffiti. Sometimes, writers play on our perception of what we expect by putting graffiti in different formats or in unusual locations. I found that graffiti had a unique relationship with New Orleans, especially post-Katrina. These pictures demonstrate how graffiti appears in many states and helps to ask the question of its role in society as a tool for personal fame, politics, or artistic expression.